uh, since there's this just a one-on-one -on -one yes. call, can you like uh, introduce yourself and perhaps you know turn on your video as well? Yeah, yeah I will on it with you. Okay. Right. Yeah, so myself, uh, Raman Aya, so I have done my MCOM. Now I'm planning to do ACCA course now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm, I have there was another... Uh, years experience in... Okay. Uh, one second, one second. There was another participant named uh, Badraya, so I'm not sure. Or but Badraya, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, in which ways? Yeah, please continue. Sorry for that. Yeah, so I have 10 years of experience in uh, finance and accounting field. So I have done mm -hmm. uh, just uh, like uh, CA foundation I have completed. I have done my income. Mm -hmm. So I'm working mm -hmm. in a fintech company now, uh, fintech company. Fintech so, company. so currently I'm working like uh, inter company and transfer budget related work. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so I thought of enhancing the skills and uh, because mm -hmm. I'm working, so it is a little difficult to uh, complete all four papers in CWR or CA. So I thought better to choose the ACC and go for one by one subject, like quarterly one subject or uh, mm -hmm. like that. I, uh, that's my plan. So I, I joined the ACC. Okay, okay, that's good to know. And this is like your first paper or? Yeah, this is my first paper. Uh, so I'm oh. writing financial management. Oh, you're also writing, writing financial management as well, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, when are you writing the AA paper for the? So I'm thinking uh, for December. For December, okay. And in September, are you writing any papers? No, 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 I'm not writing any paper in September. So okay. I'm to write before the... So uh, you opted for uh, financial management and origin assurance, right? Financial management and? Origin assurance, right? I mean, double A. No, no, only financial management. Uh, I'm sorry. So uh, as of now, we are discussing the, uh, you know, origin assurance uh, paper. So uh, are you in the right meeting now or? Okay, one second. Uh, which are the other subject? Uh, operation. Uh, no, as of now, I'm you know taking the orientation session for the audit and assurance paper. Yeah, yeah, both. So I want to understand like how the, all the papers and all uh, audit and assurance. So that's not okay. Okay. So basically, just to you know give you a brief idea regarding that, uh, I can say that uh, we have five papers at skill level, and I believe I believe that you already have received some exemptions for some papers, right? Yeah. And you still have to attempt the financial reporting paper, FR, which is the, yeah. you know, accountancy related paper. Then there is uh, financial management, taxation, audit and assurance. So, uh, and performance management as well. I don't know how many exemptions that you received, but uh, as of now, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're saying? Yeah, I received four papers as exemption. Mm -hmm. uh, all these five, five okay. performance management, Taxation, audit and assurance, financial reporting and finance and management. These five papers I have to attempt. So okay. initially I thought for December, I was supposed to go for performance management and financial management, two papers. I'm planning mm -hmm. to write in December. Okay, so you haven't purchased anything for uh, from FinFam as of now, right? Uh, have you bought any courses? No, 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 I didn't buy anything. Okay, okay, I get it. I get uh, it. Just I recently only just I'm looking now, because mm -hmm. I'm a very mm -hmm. fresher for ACCA. Okay, okay, that's, uh, I can understand that. So basically, we will be, uh, you know, a, a, in this particular session, we will be looking at the audit and assurance paper as to what the paper is, and are there any updates, the syllabus, the exams, etc. And uh, one really important advice that I'd like to provide you is that uh, you should only attempt the audit and assurance paper after your financial reporting paper. That's really, you know, mandatory that you do that or in that order. So if you are, let's say, planning for the December session, I would say either, you know, get started with the FR paper, FR and AA, or uh, like if, if you're planning on attending both, then that's fine as well. But if you're only looking uh, to attempt like one paper, then just go for FR uh, yeah. before the AA one. Okay. So, so my plan uh, is like mm -hmm. first December performance management and uh, mm -hmm. FM and for next mm -hmm. February or March, I'll go for finance reporting. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I'll go for auditing and students. Last okay, that's that's fine as well. Tax. Yeah, that that works. That's a great order. That's fine. Yeah. <clears throat>
Okay, so uh, let me just quickly tell you some things about the origin assurance paper so that you can get a you know better idea. And of course, we will also be looking at uh, you know planning some papers uh, uh, for the uh, for any attempt that you are planning forward as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna share some slides with you one second. So basically, uh, just to give you an idea about as to what the Auditing Assurance paper is, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, you know what audit is, right? Basically, what we do is we, as auditors, just uh, go to a, uh, you know, we conduct an audit on the financial report, uh, financial statements and provide them with an opinion as to whether there's anything wrong with it or not. So that's basically the whole idea here. And in order to learn this particular paper, you also need to have a knowledge of the IFRS uh, accounting standards as well, which you will learn from the financial reporting paper. And uh, the audit and assurance paper is uh, entirely different from, you know, uh, all the other skill level papers as well. And that's something uh, that you should keep in mind because for all the other papers, we have like uh, like three sections in the exam, right? Section A, section B, and section B, section C. So, uh, however, when it uh, and uh, in section E and B, it's all MCQs, whereas in section C, it's all case study questions. That's how it works for the other skill level papers. But uh, and uh, uh, but for audit and assurance, it's all a, it's majorly case study questions, and you will have to type in your answers. The uh, the proportion of multiple choice questions are comparatively low compared to the other skill level papers, because in the other skill level papers, we have. MCQs for around 60 marks, but in audit and assurance, uh, the MCQs will only be for 30 marks. So yeah, that's the one of the primary differences here. And it's not a, a calculation based paper, or it's not even a theory paper, it's more of a practical paper, you'll have to, uh, you know, uh, explain what the auditor will do, or uh, you, you'll have to provide a practical answer uh, in this particular exam to get marks here. Yeah, so that's even I have you... little experience in uh, auditing and assurance because okay. I have written my EIPCC exams. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, then you will. So I have it. idea audit and assurance. Even in my work experience, I used to go for internal audit and standard audit. Okay. Uh, okay. That's great. Auditor, I used to wait to handle it. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So where are you based out of? I'm from Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh. Okay. That's, now I'm working okay. in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, yeah okay that's good to know moving on to the syllabus so when i talk about the uh, audit and assurance syllabus there are six syllabus areas that you have to focus on and the first syllabus area is audit framework and regulation which is basically uh, where we discuss about the basics of as to what audit is as well as uh, you know uh, the regulations surrounding this particular practice etc and part B is in relation to planning and risk assessment, where we, uh, you know, uh, for, well, in order to do anything, you have to have a plan, right? If you are, let's say, planning to attend, attempt an exam or going on vacation somewhere. So you will definitely have to have a, you know, plan as to what is to be done. So it works just like that in audit as well. So we will be discussing as to, you know, how the audit planning works. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's an aspect to audit known as the audit risk and related areas. So we will be discussing about those uh, specific aspects in the syllabus area as well. And then there is a part C, which is internal control, where we will primarily learn about what, as to what the internal control systems of an organization is. And uh, yeah, we will learn some aspects in relation to the internal audit function as well in this particular syllabus area. And moving on to part B, audit evidence. This is basically where we learn as to what are the procedures that we conduct to obtain uh, you know, evidence to back our opinion or conclusions and, uh, you know, several other really interesting topics and especially topics in, uh, relating to the uh, use of uh, big data or data analytics techniques and audit as well. So these kinds of things are discussed in this particular syllabus area. And then there is part E, which is review and reporting. And this is basically, uh, you know, all about the opinion that we provide. So how do we provide the opinion or, uh, you know, what would be our ultimate conclusion or how should the report issued by the auditor be? So all these things are covered under this particular syllabus area. And finally, we have a part F, and this is something really important that you should know as well, because uh, part F, employability and technology skills is something that has been only recently added to, uh, you know, every ACCA syllabus areas. 
So it's basically nothing. It's just a skill that you need to have. That's basically it. You just have to have the knowledge of how to work through the uh, spreadsheets as well as word processors. Or in other words, basically, uh, you know, how to operate MS Excel as well as uh, MS uh, Word, etc. That's basically all it is. And uh, employability and technology skills uh, is basically, well, they basically added the syllabus area just to, uh, you know, increase your employability. Because uh, nowadays, every modern business is, uh, you know, it, it's mandatory that you should have a knowledge on the Microsoft Excel or uh, various spreadsheet functionalities uh, in the modest, modern business uh, era, right? So that's basically why they uh, specifically added this. And this is something that's relevant for your CBE exam as well, because exams are, since, since we're conducting computer-based exams, you will need to have some idea regarding the functionalities, uh, you know, that's going to uh that are available within the cbe environment so we have covered all of these things within our video lectures and uh you know we have we will be practicing uh you know for audit and assurance we will be practicing some questions within the cbe environment itself so that you can get a better understanding how to use the environment in an, in a bit more efficient manner as well and that goes for not just audit and assurance but for all subjects that we have so yeah uh that's okay. something that uh we should know Okay, <clears throat> so I'm not gonna, you know, deep dive too much into the syllabus any which ways because since you are, you know, only attempt, you're gonna attempt this maybe in the next two next sessions, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so my only uh, worry is a uh, computer based exam. How okay. fast we can buy There's, buy there's actually nothing better. to worry about because most things are easy, uh, you know, in the computer based exams, especially in the skill level, because most of the questions are like multiple choice questions. So you just have to like select the options appropriately. And for that, the only thing that you need is primarily the knowledge. That's basically it. And uh, when it comes to, you know, writing your answers or providing paragraph, th that's like really easy. And we, we don't have too much functionalities available in the environment. It's just a limited set of things. That's basically it. And uh, our tutors will, you know, guide you through, uh, you know, what are the uh, like efficient and effective methods to present your answer to the examiner as well. So don't, you don't have to worry about much about that. Yeah, and uh, yeah. just yeah, to add on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How to plan like a, a like as a professionals? How to uh, handle this uh, like mm -hmm. coaching or preparation and all? For the preparation aspect, I will get to that. I will get to that after I, you know, run through the exam structure because I, I'm just gonna have to, you know, follow those orders since, uh, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Sure. So for the exam structure, uh, first of all, uh, this is a three-hour exam. Uh, not just audit and assurance. All skill level papers are a three-hour exam, uh, and the exam structure, as I stated earlier, it's it's different from all the other su uh, subjects as well, because here we have two sections, section A and section B. We don't have a section C here. And in section A, you have three OTQs uh, that you need to answer. And as to what are OTQs, it's basically a question where you will be provided with a small scenario uh, with maybe uh, three or four paragraphs. And you just have to read through the scenario and understand the situation. And there would be five MCQs in relation to each scenario. Right? So that's basically how the question is structured. There's a scenario and five MCQs relating to that partic uh, particular scenario. And each of these MCQs carries two marks each. So, uh, you know, five times two is 10, right? So each OTQs ca will carry 10 marks each and you have three of them. So that's a total of 30 marks in section A. Now, moving on, you're still there, right? <clears throat> Yeah, let's go ahead. Go okay, ahead. okay. So in section B, we have one 30 mark case study question, as well as two 20 mark case study questions as well. And this is something yet again, uh, that uh, you'll have a better understanding if you take a look at the video question marathons, etc. Because, uh, you know, I have uh, really explained how to tackle these sort of questions and, uh, you know, also provided some tips and tricks that you can use in the exam as well. So yeah, so the 70 marks here is basically it is difficult to score, yes, but with you know due preparations and by adapting the tips and tricks, it will be a bit more easy. Mm -hmm. And then comes the time allocation. So uh, just for your information, uh, I'm not sure if you uh, will be attempting the uh, you know next orientation sessions. So I'm just gonna you know quickly fill you in regarding this time allocation as well. For section A, you will have to take about 45 minutes for this particular paper. I'm not talking okay. about any other paper, just the audit and assurance. So 45 minutes should be taken in section A. 
for the you know uh, 10 uh, sorry the three otqs and for in section b we have 30 marks and 20 mark questions right for the 30 mark question you will have to uh, allocate nine minutes for reading and planning and 45 minutes to write your answer and for the 20 mark question uh, again seven minutes for reading and planning and 30 minutes to write your answer now this categorization of reading and planning and writing is something that's common in every uh, you know uh, subject so let me just uh, quickly explain what it is so reading and planning is where you do uh, three things prim uh, primarily one is you read through the requirements first just to understand as to what the question is all about right so that's the first step read the requirements and then secondly read the scenario after that so just understand the case as to what is happening in that scenario and then highlight whatever uh, relevant information uh, that you may require to answer that particular question and then uh, you know create a structure in your mind as to how you should present your answer so these three things are should be done within the reading and planning phase and you know then the next step would be is, would be just to you know write your answer right so that's basically what you do in writing uh, phase so that's basically the time allocation and yeah. now uh, you know i'm going to explain as to how to one second <clears throat> right so let's take a look at as to how to prepare uh, for the exams and uh, i believe this is what you were looking for earlier right so yeah let's take a look yeah. <clears throat> So preparing, preparation for the exam is basically a six step process, I would say. And step one is basically to learn the syllabus and revise continuously. So learning the syllabus is, uh, I know it's kind of obvious, but you know, uh, there are a few things that you should keep in mind when learning the syllabus. One is that you should not miss out on any concepts because uh, questions can be tested from any and every syllabus area. It's not, we cannot predict those things. So uh, there are a few things that we could predict, but uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't, you know, risk my exam fees on those predictions. So uh, I would, I would cover 100% of the syllabus without skipping any of the small topics or big topics or whatever. And uh, I would revise those continuously because learning it once and then, you know, practicing questions and maybe later you, you, there's a risk that you might forget things, right? So uh, learn everything and then uh, make some time to revise through what you've learned on a continuous basis or in other words, on a daily basis as well. So take some time from your daily schedule to just revise through what you've learned, each and every syllabus areas, each and every concepts, etc. So that is basically step one. And then comes step two, where you practice questions. And in ACC exams, it's not just about learning the syllabus or uh, learning definitions, et cetera. I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, I've usually, uh, you, you know, seen students from uh, C asking me this question as to whether, uh, you know, we should by heart any definitions or, uh, you know, by heart any stuff uh, for the exam. But the thing is, uh, in ACC, we don't by heart things, we just understand things. That's basically it. As long as you can understand and, uh, you know, provide an explanation or explain it well to the examiner, you will get marks for that. So in order to do this, you know, explanation part or in order to uh, present the examiner with an appropriate answer, which he expects, you will have to practice a lot of questions. And by a lot, I mean, keep on practicing till the day of your exam. So that's basically a primary thing uh, that you should focus on as well. So practicing questions is as equal to the uh, you know, learning to learning the entire syllabus as well. It's as important as that. So moving on to the next aspect, that is question papers. <clears throat> so doing past paper or question uh, past paper exams is really crucial because you know the past papers are actually uh, what we uh, what the real exam questions would be like, or that that's the difficulty level there is. Isn't it? So by practicing questions, what I mean is just uh, you know practice the various uh, exam kits that you may have or the video question marathon that we provide you with as well and then uh you know when it's you know uh, uh, one or two weeks uh pending for the exam i would you know start practicing the past paper questions during this time piece just practice the question papers close to the exam to get that exam feeler so yeah <clears throat> that's step three and moving on to step four uh step four is basically a resource known as the examiner's report and the examiner's report is basically something that we obtained from uh, from the ECC's website itself. So you can just take a look at that. Uh, and what it is, it's, it's, it's basically uh, the 
an explanation as to what the examiner feels, you know, after each and every exam setting. That's basically it. So they just provide us with uh, as to what the strong candidate did, as well as what the what are the mistakes that the poor candidates have done, and what they expect as well. So by understanding that, we will be able to perform well in our exams. And more and about that, one additional thing that I'd like to add on here is that. Uh, you know, within each examiner's report, there are some MCQs, which is like the most difficult MCQ which has, which has been tested in that particular session. So, uh, you know, practicing those are also beneficial for your exam. So that's a, you know, really good resource that you can add to your prepara preparation as well. Moving on to the next one, uh, doing a mock exam. That's also really important because mock exams always increase your chance of success by 30%. Why do I say that? Well, that's basically because in every mock exam, you get a feeler of your exam, right? So you'll, you'll, you'll have an understanding as to, uh, you know, how you would perform in the actual exam, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it'll actually reduce the stress, uh, you know, when you're attempting, attempting your, uh, you know, main exam to a certain degree. So that's basically why we, uh, you know, conduct mock, mock exams. And more and above that, uh, when we conduct our mock exams, we provide, uh, you know, specific feedback to our students. Uh, regarding the you know room uh, areas that they have to improve upon as well so that's yet again another uh reason why you should mandatorily attempt the mock, uh, attempt the mock exam and uh you know send it to us <clears throat> and we do provide mock exams for uh, people who have subscribed to our you know courses so uh and finally the final step is basically to go write your exam because once you've uh, you know prepared or once you've uh, practiced uh, like learned the syllabus revise continuously and practice a lot of questions, you are uh, definitely, you know, ready for the exam. And this particular step-by-step -step process is not just for the, you know, AA paper, it, it, it's applicable to, uh, you know, all of the ECCA papers as well, for your, just for your reference. <clears throat> now, so that's basically uh, how to prepare. So do you have any questions up until now? Yeah, that's fine, uh, go ahead. Okay. Okay, then I'll show you how to, you know, prepare a schedule perhaps. One second, I'm sharing my screen. So are you providing any online training kind of? Online training in the sense, I didn't quite get you. Uh, for like, like the like Zoom meeting or let's say any like session for professionals. So we have to go, mm -hmm. uh, th then by myself, we have to prepare or any uh, coaching kind of you guys provide it like that. Oh, so I'll, okay. So I'll explain how the, uh, you know, course works here. So uh, majorly our courses are all pre-recorded. So you can, you know, just watch the sessions according to your, uh, whenever you get the time. That's basically how, our, how the courses work. So primarily all the major syllabus coverage and all, all other aspects are primarily done through, uh, you know, pre-recorded sessions and, uh, you know, the team will guide you through how to uh, get those sessions. And it's basically a, a simple process, I believe. So you can just contact anyone in the team for that. And uh, along with the, you know, main course or the main syllabus content, we also provide you with uh, the video question marathon as well as a, we, co we call it the revision bootcamp as well. It's inclusive of two things. One, uh, we uh, we provide you with the video with the uh, you know uh, with the with the with the revision of the entire syllabus or the key examinable areas I would say, and then uh, we also provide you with around uh, twenty to twenty five questions. It, it changes depending upon each uh, you know each courses. Uh, for example, for AA we have I believe around uh, hundred or hundred and twenty uh, MCQs as as well as around. Uh, 20 case study questions as well. So what uh, what uh, what this is is basically uh, this is just a set of videos where we practice questions. You know, uh, you know, face to face. I mean, uh, not not on a live session, but yeah, it is yet again pre-recorded, and uh, that is where we provide you with all the tips regarding how to tackle the question or how to use the CBE environment, etc. And uh, along with that, uh, we do conduct you know live sessions. Uh, on a weekly basis, usually during weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, because that's when most of our students are free because most of our students are like working professionals as well. So uh, we, you usually conduct this on Saturdays and Sundays around the evening time. And uh, yeah, during this time, I would say the, around six to, uh, you know, it, 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 it again varies upon, uh, you know, different subjects and different tutors. Yeah. So 
uh, what we do here is uh, during these live sessions, they, uh, you know, uh, discuss some key examinable topics or uh, key, uh, key exam tips and tricks, etc. And along with that, if you guys have any sort of doubts or if there is, uh, you know, some student coming up uh, saying that uh, they, they're finding difficulty in a particular topic or uh, they find like, of course, it's pre-recorded and there are chances that you may not uh, you know, understand something from a pre-recorded class, right? So, uh, for those kinds of uh, you know question uh, questions, what uh, tutors could do is they would come on live and they would discuss or take that session uh, live itself. So that's how uh, things work here. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, I think fine now. Uh, no, is no questions as of now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like, are you like planning on taking up a course here, or? Yeah, I'm planning. Uh, I think uh, after uh, almost uh, two two uh, two years, I didn't uh, study anything. Then uh, mm -hmm. completely busy okay. in work, so mm -hmm. I have to start. I think uh, I, I have seen the syllabus, uh, finance management and finance reporting. Yeah, because I know how the syllabus is in uh, CA and uh, ACC, and now I can compare it. I think there are a little mm -hmm. bit uh, in-depth knowledge in ACCA compared mm -hmm. to finance management, which is in CI, PCC, and uh, ACCA. Right, right. So okay. for those areas like in finance management, if you come finance management, like uh, uh, dividend policy, interest rate, uh, how it will impact foreign exchange, how it will impact the uh, financial decision making, and all. So those things, uh, it is not. Uh, I don't think that it is a study the material and writing. There are so much of examples uh, when we uh, practice the papers, and we have to uh, do take the decision that if we go this method is good, if we go this method is good, how is the impact the uh, organization or in the if it's a listed company, how it impact the uh, the share market as well. So we have to do all the things. I think maybe this come from expertise. Uh, uh, that is good, I think. So that's what. So wherever I feel that okay, we can go for. Even if it comes to audit and assurance, it may be the theoretical, but uh, when it comes to the more practical uh, paper, that is. Yeah, it is uh, really practical paper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, good to know as well. So uh, I'll just give you a brief idea as to how to you know plan for your upcoming exam, and you can like adopt this particular I would say technique in any of your upcoming exams as well. So one second, I'll share my screen. <clears throat> so this is just to give you an idea as to how we you know plan uh, for the exams so that we can you know prepare a schedule. So there are two things that we mandatory do. One is conduct a planning or cre create a schedule for ourselves. And uh, honestly, I can't really you know, make a schedule for you and provide it to you. I can only show you how it's done. So that's basically what, uh, what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm taking the September session as an example here. And as you can see on the 5th of September, we have the upcoming AA exam. So how will I prepare for this? Let's discuss that. <clears throat> so for the weeks prior to the exam that is basically this particular week and this these two weeks i'm going to target to do the uh, you know i'm going to plan to do the uh, past papers during the last few weeks so that's basically the first thing that i would do to the past papers here so the basic approach here is to think backwards like our main objective is to pass the exam or write the exam on this particular date so what I'm what am I gonna do? Uh, you know, before a, a few days before the exam or a few weeks before the exam, and what uh, what all things should be included in my plan? These are the things that we're gonna discuss here. We've already discussed that what all things we should do, right? We should plan the, uh, I mean, we learn the syllabus, revise continuously. We should practice questions, do the past papers, and do a mock. So these things should be included in my plan. So uh, I'm just gonna highlight these one second. <clears throat> So during so these days, this is like uh, first week of the month only, right? Even yeah, December, yeah, maybe... it's it's usually the first week of the month, yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so yeah, so during these days, I'm I, I would if let's say that I'm a full time student, then I can easily uh, do the past papers during these weeks, and uh, for the rest of the day, I would let's say practice questions. And for the rest of these weeks, I would just, uh, you know, I might take the entire July to learn through the syllabus and do my revisions. 
So that's how you should plan here. Keep, uh, just uh, you know, think uh, think uh, it you know, in a backwards manner. I mean, that's what basically usually companies do as well, right? So they just set an objective and they formulate strategies to achieve that objective. And that is exactly what we're doing here. We just, you know, set our objective here, which is to attempt the exam on fifth. And then I, you know, planned what all things to do. So my plan basically included uh, three to four things only, just, uh, you know, the past papers, the question practice, as well as, uh, you know, learning the syllabus as well. So this is how you should plan your, uh, you know, time as well. And since you were, you're a working professional, you may have, let's say, uh, maybe three to four hours on your working days, as well as uh, maybe the full day on weekends. It depends upon your, uh, you know, work-related responsibilities or family responsibilities, etc. So depending upon that, you can easily just prepare a schedule and just try to, you know, follow that uh, in a strict manner. That's how you, uh, you can, you know, be fully prepared for this exam. <clears throat> I got one paper yeah. per quarter is good, I think. For, uh, uh, I was thinking that, uh, like, for yeah, that's fine. we can go mm -hmm. one for paper per quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That, yes, that's definitely a good approach. And uh, just to ask you regarding that as well, how much time do you think can you, you know, take from uh, take during working days and during, you know, off days? So normal I days, that. I can spend three hours daily. Mm -hmm. So weekends, I can go up to six to eight hours. I can spend. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So what I would suggest is yes, three hours is fine, and you can like probably uh, usually the video lectures are usually like uh, an hour to two hours. So uh, you can take up that particular time, like let's say to watch two hours to you know, watch a video for two hours, and then you know revise the entire thing. So that's 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 really uh, it's really great that you can take up that much time on. Uh, during weekdays and uh, for weekends I would say yeah uh, try to take as much time as possible because you're a working professional so you you have you don't have the uh, much time available to just enough so take as much time as possible as for question practice what I would recommend is just uh, what I usually do is I usually recommend my students to focus on uh, you know uh, two things uh, you know at a time one thing at a time not two things one thing at a time so first of all, I, I recommend them to do uh, the MCQs and then focus on the case study questions. So if one day I'm planning to do MCQs, then I would target up to uh, around 60 to 80 MCQs per day if I'm a full-time student. If you are a working professional, that can you know, change accordingly. It depends upon your time availability. But uh, you know, do, at least during weekends, your, uh, the question practice should be 60 to 80 MCQs or uh, uh, six to seven, uh, eight, uh, case study questions as well. So that's, that's basically something that you can plan out. So just, just make a plan and then follow that. That's basically how you can, uh, you know, efficiently and effectively tackle your upcoming exam. Okay. Okay. So let me know if you have any other questions. I still have yeah, like 20 think, minutes. Uh, to uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm planning like that in, so recently started, just uh, recently started for uh, okay. uh, first okay. year uh, mm -hmm. uh, So how it is like if you complete only three or four papers, then how good it is uh, like uh, outside job opportunities and all. Yeah. So skill level, let's outside. say we have completed just up to skill level. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how good it is. Okay. So you're asking about the job demand. Okay, I get it. Get it. So uh, if you've completed like nine papers, we do have a lot of opportunities for, you know, students who have completed nine papers. But, you know, that's usually for uh, students who are like freshers. I mean, you okay. are more, more experienced in this area, right? So uh, even if you have, uh, you know, completed nine papers, then I believe that you can stand out in the market as well because uh, you're pursuing a professional qualification. So let's say uh, uh, let's say we're talking about the audit field. I don't know yeah. which field are, which field are you working as. Uh, I'm in currently? complete in fi uh, financial accounting. Uh, financial like, uh, financial field. Judge, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Preparation of the financial statements and the financial advising, intercompany okay. accounts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have you said you had like more than ten years worth of experience, right? Yeah, so we used to uh, deal with the audit schedule. So like we said, right? Mm -hmm. So internal right. controls, we used to check uh, internal controls, that credit we will mm -hmm. get and the uh, internal audit also mm -hmm. we will get. Interim audit, okay. we will do it. 
So all these mm-hmm. things we need to handle it. Okay, so in that case, then I I can pretty much guarantee that you or you can be accepted in a you know much more senior position. Uh, you know, and you can stand out from other candidates since you have uh you since you're pursuing or you have the professional qualification ACC professional qualification with you. So yeah, that that can be really beneficial, especially if you are planning to go let's say abroad as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you you know do you have such a such an idea or objective to you know go abroad perhaps? No, no, no. no. I have mm-hmm. work from India only to abroad countries. Okay. Uh, that's my okay. Plan. Yeah, I, have, opp- I think uh, recently we can see the opportunities like uh, uh, for country uh, companies uh, is in outside uh, India and we can work from India. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my exactly. uh, final business. I don't want. Yeah, to we have a lot of uh, shared services here as well. So yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, yeah, when, I, I, could have when I observe, here. I think there are a lot of uh, uh, companies that are preparing CPA or ACCA. That most of the companies are preparing ACCA. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's uh, yeah. That's basically how it is now. We're, I mean, we are getting more popularity due to our global recognition. So, and since we are usually getting like most companies are receiving work from either US or UK, etc. So, all right. So, thank you, and uh, I hope to yeah, see you when nice, nice uh, you know. Yeah. Okay, thank that's you. a nice session. So, because I'm mm-hmm. since I'm a, a very new to the this course, and uh, mm-hmm. I think you are given how to prepare and how to focus on how to time management and all. It's a, a nice session. Okay, okay. So, yeah, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. So, uh, thank you for your call. So, yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Definitely. And definitely. yeah, see you again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.